folks with nothing better to do, this is your boy Zilla Valentine. I'm here at the Kennedy Space Center at Cape Canaveral, Florida. I got to experience some of the stuff that astronauts get to do. They told me the names of all the technical stuff that I was doing, but it's just astronaut shit. It is intense. It is mind-blowing. You're not going to want to miss that footage. I also sat down with Ryan Gosling, Claire Foy, and the entire cast of First Man for some really fun and really in-depth interviews. Please check it out. First Man was so good. I saw it twice. First time I saw it, I was wondering, like, they don't have the ladies of hidden figures in there. But then I saw it the <laughs> second time. I noticed when you're going down a corridor, there are a group of young African-American women off in a corner. Were that the were those the computers? Were you aware of that? I don't know if that they were specifically. You'd have to ask Damien that okay. question. Yeah. Young. Yeah. I see a group of African American women. Yeah. Were those the hidden figures or those the, the computers? Well, the, the uh, yeah. The, so the the you know hidden figures, uh, uh, which I, I love as a film and, and the book that it's based on, um, uh, is uh, ma mainly actually about an earlier period than than mm. than this movie, the Mercury uh, period. It's right when kind of Neil was first joining in. Um, so we weren't able to actually uh, 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 you know sort of uh, look at that chapter. Uh, uh, from uh, from Neil's perspective during the years of this movie, um, but it was important. I mean, they, they were, so so many of those uh, uh, you know Catherine Johnson and her colleagues were working at NASA uh, uh, up through um, up through the uh, the later missions that we see in this movie. So it was important to certainly kind of uh, uh, acknowledge that. Yeah. Another scene that I absolutely loved, and I might have gotten in trouble at TIFF because. Uh, <laughs> um, the premiere, everyone's quiet, everyone's locked into your film, and Whitey on the moon comes on. And I go, yes! It's a great song. And they look at me like, why, why are you cheering Whitey? Like, <laughs> what was the idea behind putting that into the film? And Leon Bridges plays the character. Yeah. Is he Gil Scott Heron? And if He's, I mean, that was the idea. He was playing Gil Scott Heron and, and, uh, 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 and doing that performance. I remember uh, 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 when we first uh, sort of found that track, uh, you know, it, it, it's 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 a wonderful encapsulation as a song of a lot of the feelings that were that were being engendered by the space program at that time, uh, which are really understandable feelings. You know that, that this was a time in history where uh, uh, poverty was uh, was on the rise. There were uh, immense problems within all the cities all over America. A lot of homegrown problems, and uh, and of course the government at that time was putting a lot of money into. Uh, things like sending rockets to the moon. So uh, it was something that I realized I hadn't known much about when I started doing the research on this. I kind of thought, oh, well, back in the 60s, yeah. everyone was sort of, you know, gung-ho about going to the moon. And actually, to find out, no, there was a real debate and there was a real conversation going on about whether this was the appropriate national priority. Um, and, uh, and, and, and that sort of conversation felt like we had to have that in the movie. We had to do justice to that. Um, and it's all, as you say, it's just, it's a great song. And I, yeah. I was just, I was thrilled to get to work with Leon Bridges, yeah. even just for that one. Gil has scene. a very specific look, though, and you didn't, you didn't I, do that. No, I didn't, I, I didn't want to do, uh, uh, and it actually kind of applies to some of the other characters in the movie as well. Didn't want to do so much the lookalike kind of thing. The most important thing to me was to get a real performer who could do, instead of an actor, to sort of play Gil Scott Heron and try to sort of mold him into that, to get someone who, I felt could actually do justice to the song itself and to the performance. So it felt like let's let's not find an actor to sort of learn how to perform. Let's find a performer uh, who 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 can then sort of play this role on screen. And uh, and we were really lucky that Leon was able to do it. And I remember when Leon first did uh, he did a um, the, the, when you see the song in the movie it's it's done live. We filmed it live, but he did a little rehearsal track beforehand. I remember being sent it, and it sounded so good. It was so authentic because I'd been listening to the, 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 the original Gil Scott Heron track for yeah. for a long time, leading up to that. And to hear Leon's take, it's of course it's not exactly the same. It's Leon's own take on it, but it has just the same kind of uh, I think passion and authenticity to it. So I got really energized about the idea of shooting. That that is the ready set go. That is the go moment in the film where it really kicks off. Yeah, and I appreciated um, it. Yeah. You have so many powerful scenes. And I, I saw an interview where you were saying it was sort of chill for you to film this movie where it's kind of hectic for you. Uh, what was it like playing Neil Armstrong's wife? Because she has, she holds, she, she makes this movie in my opinion, no offense. But she, <laughs> but, but, Claire, you, make, you make the movie, you make the movie stand out from every other NASA movie there is. Uh, I don't know about that. Um, I agree. It was. <laughs> It was it was ama it was amazing. I think um, to uh, have a chance, um, like any any um, character who at that time has been 
had someone speak for them or has had words put in their mouth or has not necessarily been portrayed as they would like to be portrayed. It's always, um, uh, an honour's not the right word, but to, to actually give them a voice, which is their own. And I felt like Josh Singer, who wrote the script, did so much research and talked to Janet so often. And Janet was, and the boys were so involved in the script and, and then eventually when we were shooting the movie, that I felt like that was it, that was the undercurrent of it, was that these voices were so true and so real because um, Josh had been so inspired by them. So um, it was it was a real honour, but also kind of like a, a better not ruin yeah. it. Another thing that stood out to me is you cry in this movie, and I, I have a lot of uh, friends who are actresses, and they can cry on demand, and it creeps me out all the time. But you get to cry, and we don't get to see men cry a lot. How is it for you playing a scene where you actually get to show emotion and cry? Probably on cue 100 times a day. How was that? Um, no, that, that scene was handled very, uh, you know, um, I think, uh, you know, carefully by Damien. It was something that, uh, you know, it, it, it was something where, you know, uh, um, you know, Neil famously didn't discuss these these this specific tragedy in his life or, or these tragedies in his life, you know, and it was something where, um, but it didn't seem truthful to think that it wasn't something that he, he didn't grieve privately. So uh, uh, I think um, it was important to have a scene where we, where we could have that, but then also honor the fact that he was not an overtly emotional person, uh, you know, in, 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 in his, in his day to day life. Yeah. It was so beautiful, and I have a million more questions, but that's my time. Thank it's you been so a much, man. Chatting with you. You Take too. Care. Godzilla. Yes. Zilla, bitch.